Howdy. We're going to talk about critical infrastructure and industrial control systems. If you're not familiar with industrial control systems, most of our critical infrastructure is made up of these. They're highly automated. That's the way you want to think of industrial control systems, is highly automated. How we get our water, how we get our power, how we get uh, anything that's automated. You can think of these two words, highly automated, for industrial control systems. You'll hear it called operational technology, SCADA systems. There are big security risks, and again, I'm putting this under the emerging topics area of our class because right now we still don't know how to assess risk in these. Let's talk about it. I want you to understand the risk associated, but I also want you to understand that OT, or industrial control systems, or a subset of those SCADA systems, has completely different ways to protect, detect, respond, and recover than IT systems. And that's because of this. When the systems are highly automated, everything has to be synchronized. All the timing has to be synchronized, sometimes to the milli or microsecond. If you introduce overhead by protecting or detecting or responding to the system, you mess up the timing. So for a long time, we thought if we air gap the systems, if we didn't put them on the internet, if we uh, the, P, the uh, industrial control systems are made up of PLCs, programmable logic controls, they use proprietary programming language, we, we fooled ourselves into thinking that if we had all these measures in place, no one would hack into them. And that, of course, changed in 2010 when Stuxnet hit. So when you want you to think of industrial control systems, you might want to take a separate class on this or do some research. For the perspective of this class, I want you to think of them as complex systems, that they are highly automated, very little human interaction. The human may be the operator. Typically, the human's checking a screen or a series of screens, uh, consoles to check the performance, but not interacting directly with the system. This is our number one or number two threat. Intellectual property theft and threats to critical infrastructure are our top cybersecurity threats now. And as I said, they're industrial control systems, operational technology, SCADA systems, and the like. What I want you to remember from this is that it's really just tough to assess the risk. How do I assess the risk to uh, that malware could be introduced? How do I assess the risk that a USB stick could be used as it was in Stuxnet? And that's because these systems are highly connected, they're highly dependent, there's a cascading impact, something goes wrong, and that cascades with unintended consequences. And as I said, you cannot protect, detect, respond, or recover with the same mechanisms for IT systems because of the precise, precise timing and synchronization. So it's a challenge now to figure out how to protect them. And typically, we protect them by putting something around the industrial control system, not in it. So just think of industrial control systems as meaning highly automated. Well, let's see. What could this be? Pipeline disruption in Alaska, bridges down, oil refinery fire, uh, if you took knocked out 911 service, if you have power outages, uh, any of these that are listed here, I've got this somewhere off of the, uh, the web, threat to water supply, regional SP, uh, ISPs out of service, this is all the type of uh, risk and also think about this what if you had a synchronized attack so I'm going to do a terrorist attack but I'm going to take down the 911 system and then I'm going to execute that or I'm going to uh, 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 blow up bridges let's say and then then uh, at, have the oil refinery blow up by introducing malware or something into a sensor and the bridges being down won't allow uh, rescue personnel to get there. Who does this? Insiders, hackers, virus writers, criminal groups, your typical usual suspects. It's become the preferred method for terrorists, nation states, information warfare. Again, going back to the cyber uh, national strategy recently released by the White House, we are now going on the offensive. We are now going for defense. And we have said, and I say we as a country, this is now a policy, that we will 
demonstrate our prowess on attacks on the critical infrastructure. I'm hoping they don't mean blow anything up, but for instance, if we don't want Russian or Chinese hackers in our power grid, maybe you take a February day and turn the lights on and off several times in Moscow or shut the heat off for 15 minutes. Not where you're going to kill somebody, but you're going to send a strong message. What happens when these systems, and I said they were interdependent, is that they are all used in the supplier chain. So we want to have uh, oil and natural gas. Well, how do we get oil and natural gas? Well, there's some kind of transportation, either through pipelines or trucks. Uh, we need that oil and natural gas to be transported to feed our emergency response, our ambulance, and all this. Uh, if we can't, if we can interfere with this, this chain of events, then we've weakened our government. We, we can't have, let's say, FEMA respond and, um, or, or banking and finance. So this is all interconnected. And they're all different government agencies uh, overseeing them. They're all different aspects of um, how this works. If it's a power grid, if it's a communication, if it's government, if it's, if it's uh, private, all of this is the inter demonstrates both the complexity of the systems and how the systems are interdependent. So in the old days, we had analog control systems, and then we had digital control systems, and now we have everything networked. So what? Well, here's the other problem with critical infrastructure. We have legacy systems. I used to work in oil and gas. It's not unusual to see 30, 40-year-old pieces of equipment that were built before anybody ever considered security still working. And a lot of the prevailing attitude is, if it's not broken, don't fix it, OK? It's working. We don't want to upgrade because we don't know what the unintended consequences were because of the automation and the timing and the interconnection and the like. So here's another diagram I, I stole off of some place. I've always tried to source it on the bottom of give proper attribution. But again, the whole idea is this is not only complex, not only geographically distributed, not only interconnected, then you have communication, you have sensors, you have all this technology, and at the same time, you have several different corporations or entities controlling certain aspects of this, be it residential, commercial, industrial, government, or what have you. So there's a kind of like this handoff. So here's what I want you to remember about this. Critical infrastructure is highly automated. It's one of the biggest targets by hackers not right now. I would say it's number one or number two, intellectual property and industrial control systems to get to the critical infrastructure. We've seen Stuxnet, Shamoon, we've seen these. The procedures differ greatly from OT and IT systems. OT, industrial control systems, highly automated. And we don't have a good way to assess risk in these systems. I have given you one paper by Rebecca Moore <coughs> and uh, about a bow tie method of doing this. And I've looked and done some research, and sometimes I've worked at a company some years ago that had an Israeli technology that used Monte Carlo methods, trying to determine what if, what if, what if, uh, game theory. Or now we're looking at, can you, can you assess the risk in these systems using machine learning or AI? How do you figure out the cascading consequences? How do you figure out the true risk? So I'll leave it with that and give, tell you it's a great opportunity for career in technology. Thank you for listening.